Hi everyone, welcome to my second video in the series. For people who have watched my last video, welcome back. For those who haven't watched it, I'm Brian and this is my seventh year in the United Kingdom. I finished my high school in Hong Kong. I then went to Cambridge and completed my bachelor's and master's degree reading natural sciences specializing in chemistry. I'm currently at the University of Oxford doing a PhD in chemical biology. So that's the study of chemical reactions in biology. I have received a lot of wonderful comments on my last video, and it is nice that many of you find it useful. A lot of you have asked me to share more about my university application process. So I'll focus on that today. We're going to continue our city tour in Oxford as well. The first step in university application is to decide which course you want to apply to. You want to choose a course that matches your interest and ability, or you are going to have a very difficult time ahead. It is good to speak to people who took different subjects in university. Your school may also organize exhibitions and workshops to help you with your subject choice. You should bear in mind that learning a subject in university can be very different from learning it in high school. Take chemistry for example. There are definitely a lot of facts to remember at high school level. In university, however, there are a lot more theories and principles to learn, and relatively fewer facts to remember. I know that when applying to universities in Hong Kong, it is a common strategy to choose your subject based on your grades. In the UK, however, people usually choose their university based on their grades. There is a less direct relationship between grades of applicants and the subjects they apply to. If you have a chance, it is always best to visit the universities in person before applying to them and decide for yourself if the environment is suitable for you. Obviously, that can be difficult with COVID but you should do so when it is over. When I filled in my UCAS application for universities in the UK, I could choose up to five courses in my application. However, I could only apply to one course at Oxford and Cambridge, and I could not apply to both universities in the same year. So I chose Natural Sciences in Cambridge, I also needed to submit my personal statement, IELTS test results, recommendation letters, and predicted grades for my application. It is worth ensuring that you have all the documents ready before you apply. It may take some time to obtain some of the documents, such as IELTS test results. You can take multiple IELTS tests until you are satisfied with your score. You are applying to UK universities with your predicted grades, so in some sense, the predicted grades are as important as your grades in your final examination. I submitted my application in October. I was then asked if I wanted to read physical or biological natural sciences and I chose Physical Natural Sciences. Physical sciences include physics, chemistry, and material sciences, whereas biological sciences include different branches of biology. The choice determined the interview questions I received, but it had no impact on the classes that I could choose in Cambridge. I also needed to choose a college in Cambridge. Colleges in Cambridge function like the houses in Hogwarts. 
the university is responsible for most of the teaching and examinations. While the colleges provide accommodation, meals, and recreational facilities, colleges are responsible for organizing most of the small group teachings. Colleges are also responsible for undergraduate admissions, and they may require you to take extra examinations for the admissions process. When I was applying, I chose Saint Catherine's College because of its central location in Cambridge. The college also has very good support for students taking natural sciences. It also has some of the best teaching fellows in chemistry. Students in the college are very friendly, and here is where I met some of the best friends in my life. Saint Catherine's also has the best food in Cambridge, and that's a huge bonus. In December, I was invited to an interview. On the day of my interview, I landed at London Heathrow Airport. And went straight to Cambridge. I would not recommend you to do the same, as you would like to be well rested before the interview. I was also recovering from the flu when I had my interview. Fortunately, I had enough adrenaline to get me through the day. I arrived at Catherine's College for my interview. And it was very challenging. My interview was divided into two parts. The first part was on maths and physics, while the second part was on chemistry. I recognized one of my interviewers as I had read one of his books before. In both interviews, I was given pen and paper. And the interviewers asked me science and maths questions. The questions were difficult to solve on their own, but they were even harder to solve in an interview. I had to think about the questions, write down my solutions, and verbally explain all my thoughts at the same time. This was definitely something new to me. The interviewers asked increasingly difficult questions, and eventually, I was not able to answer them. This turned out to be their plan all along. They tried to teach me how to solve the questions, and they observed how I learned on the spot. That was followed by some additional questions requiring me to apply what I just learned to new situations. The two interviews combined lasted more than one hour. I took this photo after the interview. It was a very stressful day for me, and I could hear the interviewers' voices in my head weeks after the interview. So it was an incredibly great relief to me when I finally received an offer in January. My advice for anyone applying to Oxford and Cambridge is to really know your subject. The questions in the interview are a lot harder than the questions you normally see in class, so you need to get hold of some harder questions to practice on. For example, questions from the Hong Kong or International Olympiad would be useful. Apart from that. You can also try past paper questions from the Hong Kong A Level exam, as it was definitely one of the most difficult exams in the world. During the interview, you should remember that the interviewers are interested in knowing your thinking and approach to difficult questions. You should think aloud and voice out your thoughts. Especially when the solution is not clear to you yet, you need to pay extra attention when you struggle with the questions, as the interviewers will take this opportunity to guide you towards the correct answer, and assess how well you learned on the spot. 
I hope you find the video helpful and see you next time.